Good morning, New Life. Uh, just a reminder, if you have any prayer requests or joys, to go ahead and put them in the basket back by Robin um, so that Marsha can grab those. If you would please stand and join me in singing Hosanna as our acolyte comes down. Find it 394 in your hymnal or up on the screen. Please be seated. Good morning. If you look in your uh, bulletin for the uh, announcements, we'll go through those real quick. Uh, we're going to have a Bible study tonight. We're studying the, uh, um, um, chosen. the chosen. We're in season two. We've been off for, is it three? Yeah. Okay. We've been off for a couple of weeks, but we're going to resume tonight with the watch, begin to watch the, uh, the, the video again and have a discussion of it the next Sunday. Uh, Young at Heart uh, meets every Monday at 12 p.m. The youth group meets every Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Choir practice meets every Thursday at 6.30. The coming up this on the 9th is an administrative board meeting, meeting at 6.30 and we'll have a baptism and confirmation service on April 14th. That's all I have for right now. Yes, ma'am? There is also an SPPRC meeting this Tuesday, making up from the one we couldn't have last week. It'll be at, from 5.30 to 6.30 before the admin board meeting. Um, and then also, I would like to remind everybody, 
of our special offering baskets that we have in the front on the first Sunday of each month. These are specifically for, uh, right now our project is feeding the homeless. And uh, yesterday was um, our day where the lunches of love were distributed. And Wendy and Little Harper and Karen took them out. And Wendy said they didn't even get, they didn't get very far before the, all 60 lunches were gone. That there are so many people, they just went simply up 240 and over to May and they were gone. They were, they were empty of lunches just in that short period. The one story that Wendy told me that touched me the most yesterday, and there were several, but there was one lady that was sitting um, in a wheelchair, and she had a little chihuahua, and she was a lady who uh, only had one, one leg. And uh, Wendy said they you know, walked up to her and took her a lunch, asked her if she would like a lunch, and she said, oh, thank you so much. And she said as Karen was walking away from her, that Wendy was still facing her and could see her, and she said, so it, it wasn't for show, it wasn't for anything, because Karen was already walking away and had her back to her. And she said the little lady was sitting there in her chair and she looked up toward this guy and she said, thank you, God, for sending them to me today. So we're making a difference. So if you're going to give to anything special, please consider giving. It's, it's once a month that we feed. It's once a month that we ask for a special offering. So if you're able to, uh, please uh, give generously to that cause. So, okay, thank that's you. That's it for me. Thank you. We'll move on to the uh, uh, joyous concerns. Do you have anything for I us? Do. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to. I want, first of all, I want to turn my microphone back on because um, I thought I was done for a minute. I'm. I just. I have some joys that I want to talk about today. One is the rain that we received yesterday. Amen. Now, I know some of you did not, but our rain gauge showed we got a half an inch of rain in a very short period of time, and so it was definitely very much needed. Uh, we could have done without some of the wind, but the rain was an awesome byproduct. Uh, I also uh, was thrilled this morning to see Tommy walking in without his walker, so that was a joy today as well, and to have Tommy and Donna back with us was awesome. Uh, to have Miss Tracy back with us this morning is a joy. Um, you know, there's been, and to see Miss Norma coming in on Sunday mornings is an absolute joy after her being gone for so long. You know, we all go through all these things together, believe it or not. When one is out, everyone notices. Uh, so I would encourage you this morning to look around and see who's not here and check up on those individuals this afternoon when you leave church and just make sure that they're doing okay. Now, I also have some concerns today that I have people have given me and some that I have written down as well. Um, for those of you that don't know, Pauline is out of the hospital and she's now in a rehab facility in Norman. So be praying that Pauline receives the help and care that she needs while she's there and that she's back up on her feet very, very soon. Uh, also, I'd ask for you to all please be praying for Jen and Sheridan. Uh, Sheridan is still not over um, he's negative with COVID, but he's still struggling with the cough. And actually, they were supposed to be camping this weekend and decided this was not the weekend to do that. So, bronchitis. bronchitis. So, and just pray for Jen and Sheridan, please, for extra, extra peace, extra comfort, and just for blessings just overflowing. They both do so much for all of us. Please pray that God would touch them in a special way. Also, Wayne and Jerry. Um, they both were down last Sunday, you know, with COVID. I understand that they're now testing negative, but Wayne is still not feeling wonderful. So please continue to pray for Wayne and Jerry. I got a note from Sarah that said a friend of hers, Danny Graham, um, has passed away. And that Danny would help their school every week. And when she would have a hard day, that he was always a light for her. Please pray for his wife, his family and his friends that he just passed away yesterday. Um, also, Jonathan um, says that Claire's new medication they've put her on so far is not working. So please pray for the doctor to find a medication that will help her. Oh, and good news, there are six dozen eggs in the fridge for anyone that would like some. So be sure you grab those before you go today if you can use those. Uh, Dawn gave me a note that says her coworker, Rochelle, uh, has just lost her sister. 
So please be praying for Rochelle and all of the family uh, for peace and joy in that situation. And her co-worker Raquel has just lost her grandfather. So we know that this is, uh, it's always so tough when we lose a loved one. And uh, words can't, can't do anything except hopefully comfort us and console us and let us know that others care and that they are listening. But please be praying for them as well. And then I have a note also from Sarah that says, uh, Jeannie's dog, Lily, uh, has been diagnosed with Cushing's disease. So please be in prayer for Lily, but also for Jeannie and all the family. Um, and so if you all would please at this time join me in prayer. Our great and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so grateful that we can come to you in this time with our joys and with our concerns. Father, we're so thankful for those that are here today, and we pray special blessings upon them all. Be with those that are unable to be with us today, Father, with your healing touch in whatever way is needed, whether it be physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. Lord, we ask that you touch them with the Holy Spirit as only you can. Father, I am so grateful this morning that uh, Tommy is up and walking and that his rehab is helping and that he's doing so much better and grateful to see he and Donna here today. Father, I'm grateful for your beneficial rains that we received yesterday on our lawns, on the wildfires, on all the areas, Lord. We're just so grateful for that as well. And then, Lord, we also bring to you our concerns, those things that we have heavy on our hearts and in our minds today, those things that were spoken as well as left unspoken. Father, we continue to lift Pauline up to you that she just be able to uh, have the time and rehab that she needs to continue to grow stronger and more steady on her feet. And Lord, that she is able to be out and mobile very, very soon. Lord, I also pray blessings upon Jen and Sheridan. Lord, we are so grateful for all that they do for our, our family here at church as well as their own family. And Father, we just ask that you just touch them with special blessings this week. Lord, we also ask you to be with Wayne and Jerry as they continue to recover from COVID. And Lord, we pray that they're back with us and feeling wonderful once again very soon. Lord, we ask you this week to be with uh, Rochelle and with Raquel, both who lost a loved one this week. Father, that you would give them comfort and strength and peace in the days and weeks and months ahead. Lord, we also pray for Claire and that the doctor would have all wisdom and all knowledge to know exactly how to treat what is going on with her and that would restore her to complete health very, very soon. Lord, we ask you to be with uh, Danny Graham's fam family, Lord, as they have lost a, a loved one, and to be with Sarah and all of her friends as they go through this time of mourning as well. Father, would you just comfort them? Just wrap the Holy Spirit around them like a big warm blanket. Give them an extra tight hug. Let them know that they are not walking alone, that you are with them each and every step of the way. Lord, we also ask you to be with Jeannie as she has received some bad news about her, uh, Lily. Lord, that you would comfort her, be with her, and give the, the vet the knowledge and the wisdom to know exactly what to do and how to best treat Lily as well. Lord, it's such a relief, it's such a comfort. <laughs> to be able to come together with this group of family and friends and to be able to lift up to you all of our needs, whether they are great or small. Because, Lord, if they matter to us, they matter to you. And now, if you would all pray with me as we were taught to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in the, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you would please join me in our call to worship, which you will find on the screen, as well as in your bulletin. How can we keep still this day? There is joy in this place. God's steadfast love extends to everyone. God reaches out to us all in forgiveness and compassion. 
Thanks to God for all the wonderful blessings we have received. Let us celebrate God's joyful love for and with us. Amen. Amen. So now if you join with me to read the Apostles' Creed that's in uh, on page 881 in your hymnal, or you can read, view it up on the screen above. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join me in singing wonderful words of life. You'll find it in your hymnal on page 600 or up on the screen. Harper and Miss Ellie and Joshua to come be my helpers, please. Thank you. And Bill, would you please come and help this morning? Pardon me? He's coming. And Jonathan? Here you go. Oh my goodness, Ellie. Are you putting that all in here? Can you open this? Yes, I can help you open that. One second. Let me do something with these, okay? Open okay. I think I'm gonna Hang on. You got it? Is this, That's this is important stuff. Because it's going to make noise. Are you ready? Here you go. Put some in all of them. There you go. Here, I got yours right here. There's yours. I'm holding yours for you. You want it? Okay. Are you ready yet? Not yet. Hang on. Good job. You want me to take that? Now, you carry the bucket so other people can put some in it too, okay? Hang on. Wait for me. Just a minute. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you this day, Father, for your grace, your kindness, your goodness. Lord, we're so grateful that we can come into your storehouse to deliver our tithes and our offerings. Lord, remind us that as we do, that we're returning to you only a small portion of what you have blessed us with. All in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You go with Mr. Jonathan. You girls go over that way, okay? You got this, Bill. <laughs> What they lack in organization, they make up for in cute. Amen? <laughs> Bill says we're good. Please stand as you are able. <laughs> seated. Heavenly Father, I pray your blessings upon your faithful servants, Lord, as they come into your storehouse. May you bless them in abundance. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Now, as we prepare this morning to receive Holy Communion, I'd like to remind you all that in the United Methodist Church, the communion table is open to all, regardless of membership or affiliation. All that is required is that you have a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You can follow along with us on page 12 of your hymnal. It will also be on the screen up above us. And Chuck will be leading us in our responses this morning. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we now have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ. Given for you. The blood of Christ. Given for you. Christ's table is prepared for you beginning at the rear of this sanctuary and working our way forward. Please come.
And all God's children said, well, I wonder what time it might be now. Children's, just in case you were wondering, Bill, you want to come do this? <laughs> How is everybody? I know this is the special bear, isn't it? You have a bear like that too? You have how many? You have three bears like this? You have that many? Okay. And you have shoes. If they would only stay on, right? Yeah. Okay, well, listen up. All right. All right, everybody, this way. Right here. Right here for just, just a couple of minutes, okay? Right here. Okay. Y'all are so good. Do you know that in the Bible, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Who knows what a disciple is? One of Jesus' friends. One of Jesus' friends. Somebody that follows Jesus, right? And it said, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, now I have another question for you, since y'all are so smart. Who can tell me what sin is? It's when you do something bad. When you do something bad, like what? Like not sharing your toys? What else? What are some other things that... Do you share your toys? You do? Okay, well, next Sunday, bring a toy that can sit here with me like this, all right? Can you do that for me? Okay, because see, Harper's sharing today. Isn't that nice? I have a feeling when we're done, she'll be wanting to take it with her, but that's okay, huh? So, so tell me again, what is sin? Something bad that God doesn't like. So somebody tell me another sin you can think of. Um, what? Help me, Grandma. Something illegal. You're right. Absolutely. Very good, Joshua. Huh? Where's your Grandma? I know. She's right back there in the corner. She's watching you. She's got, she's got you like this. Okay? Yeah, she's watching you. Okay, so let me think of some other things that would be a sin. How about, okay, what do you got? I know that's Grandma Tracy. Hi, Grandma Tracy. Okay, all right, so well, can anybody out there think of anything that would be a sin? What's something that God wouldn't like? Lying. Oh, lying is a big one too, isn't it? What else? What? Being mean to somebody. What? Not doing what your parents say. Not doing what your parents say. I hope yours are watching this morning so they can be so proud of you because I know you always do what they say, right? Absolutely. How about... Cleaning up my playroom. Except for cleaning up the playroom. Well, I mean, that's understandable. I mean, you know. That big of a mess. Not doing your chores like your parents say you're supposed to? Yes. How about bullying somebody? That's a sin, absolutely. Um, how about telling up stories so people will like you better? No, that wouldn't be good either, would it? Uh, how about keeping secrets from your parents? No, nope, shouldn't do that one either, right? How about yelling at your parents? No. no. Talking back to your parents. Talking back to your parents. I remember I, I talked back to my dad once. So that was all it took. How about, um, what, can you think of anything else that we need to talk about, or are we good? We're good? Ellie says we're good. Ellie, sit down. Okay, sit down. Stay with me here. Come here. Remember? I only need a minute. Not going to bed when your parents say going to bed. Oh, that's one that's hard to do sometimes, isn't it? You know, we all sometimes get caught up by bad habits, don't we? And they're not just bad habits, we have to remember. Because 
not doing your homework, not doing the things we're supposed to do. You do your homework? Oh, so those bad habits are really, you don't? Okay. Those bad habits are really sin, and we need to remember that. And they're all things that we need to stop doing if we're not supposed to do them, and we need to start doing them if we are supposed to do them, right? And math is one of the things you have to do. You're absolutely right. I cannot I tell you. Not listening to your teacher. Not listening to your teacher. She's going to sit here the rest of the day and think it's sins. Y'all be ready. So, <laughs> so the Bible says that if we let sin take over in our life, that we're really following who? God. No. Yeah. That's if we're not letting sin take over. But if we let sin take over in our lives and we keep doing the bad things we're not supposed to do, we're really following the devil. We don't want to do that, do we? Never, not a bit. No, that's absolutely right. So, all right, so we're going to go back here for a second while I've got you paying attention for a second. Do you remember the Bible verse I told you in the very beginning, what it said? Anybody remember what it what it told us? Yeah. What? Uh, if you follow my teachings, then you are my disciples. So that tells us that if we want to be friends of Jesus, that we will follow the good things that he teaches us, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So and doing that makes God, do you think, happy or sad? Happy, very happy. Okay, well, you need to clean your room probably more than one time. I'm sorry, because I bet you dirty it up more than one time. Am I right? All right, so let's pray. Can we do that before you go, Allie? Let's pray. Hands up, heads down. Ready? Dear God, thank you for giving us your word. That we can study it, we can learn it, and we can live by it. Amen. Uh, Miss Jody is going to take y'all to hair. Whoa, you want to suck her? Um, am I keeping Bubba or are you checking him? You want to suck her before you go or no? You want one? All right, take off. Good luck, Miss Jody. Scripture reading this morning is from Psalms, chapter 37, verses 1 through 7 and 39 through 40. Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in times of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. You know, it used to be, back oh, a day or two ago, that when a young man reached the age of 18 years old, they were required to register for the draft. Any of you remember those days? You know, when I was in my late teens and in my 20s, I met and I was friends with several Vietnam vets. And the, the classification I learned for those who were required to register for the draft went from 1A, meaning they were eligible for military service, all the way through the classes to uh, those that were not eligible, and those were what? Who remembers? 4F. 4F that's right. Well... Being classified as a 4F would have kept you out of the service for our country, but I want you to think about something else today, because the opposite is actually true in regard to God's army. 
And that brings me to today's topic or today's title, which is the four F's of the Christian faith. Now, the first one in our scripture today that, that Chuck shared with us, Psalms 37, 1. It says, do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. So that whole psalm that he just shared with us shows the, the happy state of the godly person and the short-lived prosperity of the wicked person. It can be summed up in the following. You know, kind of like, don't fume, don't worry about the other guy. You know, God is the righteous judge and he's going to have the last say. Don't worry about it. You know, worry never solved a problem. Worry never paid a debt. Worry never alleviated a pain. Worry never turned an enemy into a friend. Worry never turned a wrong into a right. See, worry is kind of like the interest that's paid by those people who borrow trouble. You know, sometimes the troubles of tomorrows, you know, which may never even come anyway. You know, my, my grandma used to say, don't go borrow on trouble. Well, I didn't know what that meant when I was a child, but I sure know what it means as an adult and as a Christian. And worry is like the interest you're paying on that trouble that probably won't even come anyway. I, I read this little ditty this week while I was preparing for today's message, and it said, now, pay attention, because you, you'll get this one in the end, I promise. It says, the worry cow... Could have lived till now. If only she had saved her breath. She feared the hay wouldn't last all day. So she choked herself to death. So worried that what she had wouldn't last that she choked herself to trying to take it all in at one time. We do that. We overwhelm ourselves with worry, don't we? I mean, we will just get out that shovel and just dig and dig and dig that hole deeper and deeper and deeper until we can't see the top side of it anymore. A Christian, however, think about this, who is known to be a worrier is really a poor testimony of being a Christian. See, by their constant worrying, they're sending out a very clear message to everybody. That, and the message is, you know, you know I know God's taking care of you over there, but he's just not big enough to take care of all my problems. You just don't know all the problems I have. God, I, God can't cover it. You know, he, he's not big enough. He's not strong enough. He's not capable enough. You know, but, but, or maybe it is that he's big enough, and maybe my faith's just too small. You know, I, I just can't trust myself to, to trust him in, in all these struggles that I'm going through. But what kind of, of a message, a testimony, does that put out to other people? When you walk around worried about everything there is to worry about 24 hours a day. Digging that hole. So how do we break that worry habit? Well, number one, you've got to learn somewhat to live one day at a time. Tomorrow is not promised, people. Amen? Live one day at a time. Be grateful for what you have today. Be thankful for the blessings that God puts in your life today. And you know what? Another thing I think you have to do to, to break that worry habit is to lift somebody else's burden every day. You know, I have found that the best way to stop a pity party is to go do something for somebody else. Suddenly you quit worrying about your problems nearly so much when you're helping somebody with theirs. You know, lift somebody up for that day. And another thing that I think we can do to break the worry habit is, is kind of maybe memorize that scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. Now I cannot tell you how many times I have stumbled off into the ditch in my lifetime. But it's because I wasn't following the path that God had laid out for me that he was shining this big beacon light on, and yet I still stumbled over here into the darkness. So our first F of being a, of a Christian lifestyle is what? Who remembers? Fret not. That's right. Our second one is in Isaiah 41.10. It says, 
fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Now, I want you to think about it. Fear is a really close relative to worry. Okay? The, they both just paralyze us. Have you ever been paralyzed in fear? If not, I, it, let me tell you, let me give you something to dream about tonight. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes you'll get so afraid of something, you're just like frozen. You can't move. You can't do anything. You just stand there and watch it unfold, or not. But fear can absolutely paralyze us. And you know, people live in, in bondage to fear. And there is fear of all kinds. There's fear of death. There's fear of sickness. There's fear of failure. There's fear of poverty. There's fear of being alone. There's fear of germs. I want to give you some, an example of just a few of the fears that people battle. Okay? You just might be amazed. Pallidophia is the fear of baldness and bald people. Just, it's a real fear, okay? Aerophobia is a fear of drafts, like not the military draft, but a draft coming through a door or a window, okay? Porophobia is a fear of the color purple, Okay? Chatophobia is the fear of hairy people. Levophobia is a fear of objects on the left side of the body. Okay? Y'all think I'm making these things up. Take notes. Look them up. Graphophobia is a fear of writing in public. Now, here's my favorite. Are you ready? Graphophobia, if you're writing that down. A fear of writing in public. Here's my favorite. Favorite, Phobophobia. Phobophobia. It's the fear of being afraid. Fear is the great enemy of the human. I studied on this one, let me tell you. Go Google. Go to my friend Google and look up the different kinds of fears. I could have gone on for weeks with a series on fears. Fear is the greatest enemy of the human race. It inhibits us. It, it reduces us. It, it causes all of us to live like little spiritual midgets. It paralyzes us. And fear is also the great enemy of faith. D.L. Moody said that some folks go to heaven second class and some folks go to heaven first class. He said the second class people were those who said, that as David did in Psalm 56, 3, when I am afraid, I will trust. But the first class people say what, what it was said in Isaiah 12, 2, I will trust and not be afraid. There's a difference there. Fear is the father of cruelty. I mean, the snake strikes and the dog bites and the cat scratches when they're all in a panic of fear. Am I right? You back somebody into a corner and make them afraid, and you never seen anybody come out fighting like you will. Fear, I think, could, could be the devil's other name. You know, fear of, of ridicule by their peers is what so oftentimes causes a teenager to take up drinking and drugs. You know, fear robs the soul of sunshine. It, it turns the optimist into a pessimist. It, and to all of that, what Jesus had to say was, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. <clears throat> Jesus says to everybody, fear not. Fear not life. You know, I, I lived it. And nowhere do you have to go that I have not been. Fear not death. I died and rose again. And fear not uh, eternity, because I inhabit it. I am there. So now here's the remedy for fear. Faith in certain aspects of of his character, of the character of Jesus. That's the answer. Faith in his presence, faith in his power. 
and faith in his promises. So the, the first F was fret not. The second F was fear not. Let me give you the third one. You'll find it in Luke 18.1. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Faint not. Galatians 6.3 says we shall reap if we faint not. Now to faint in, in biblical terms is to, is to lose heart, to give up. The Bible has so much to say about, about perseverance and about faithfulness, whether it's in regard to prayer or, or discouragement or failure or the uh, persecution that we may go through. You know, Charles Spurgeon, I think most people know who Charles Spurgeon is, right? He said, the snail reached the ark by crawling one centimeter at a time, but never gave up. Noah Webster labored for 36 years writing his dictionary. Leonardo da Vinci worked on the painting of the Last Supper for 10 years. Sometimes he would get so absorbed in what he was doing, he would forget to eat for days on end. Adam Clark spent 40 years writing his commentary on the Holy Scripture. William Carey labored seven years before he led one person to Christ in Burma. William Wilberforce, who is in our United Methodist history, was discouraged one night in the early 1790s after another defeat in his 10-year battle against the slave trade in England. He was tired and frustrated he opened his Bible and he began to leaf through it. And a small piece of paper fell out and fluttered to the floor. Well, it was a letter written by John Wesley shortly before he died. And Wilberforce read it again. And here's what John Wesley's letter said. It said, unless the divine power has raised you up, I see not how you can go through your glorious enterprise in opposing that abominable practice of slavery, which is the scandal of religion and of human nature. Unless God has raised you up for this very thing, you will be worn out by the opposition of men and devils. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Are all of them together? Stronger than God? Oh, be not weary of well-doing. Go on in the name of God and in the power of His might. Our first F, fret not. Our second F, fear not. Our third F, faint not. Don't give up. Our fourth F, Forget not. Don't forget God's blessings. In Psalms 88, 12, we read of the land of forgetfulness. It says in Psalms 44, 20 and 21, If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God have discovered it since He knows the secrets of the heart? I read a, a short story several weeks ago, but it came back to me this week while I was doing this message. And, I, and it, the title of the story is His One Mistake. And I want to read just a paragraph of that story to you this morning. It says, He brushed his teeth twice a day. The doctor examined him twice a year. He wore galoshes when it rained. He slept with the windows opened. He stuck to a diet with plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. He golfed but never more than 18 holes at a time. He got at least eight hours of sleep every night. He never smoked or drank or lost his temper. He exercised every day. He was set to live to be a hundred. The funeral will be Wednesday. He was only 63. He is survived by 18 specialists, four health institutions, six gymnasiums, and numerous manufacturers of health foods and drugs. He remembered everything, but he forgot God. He lived as though this world was all there is. And now, 
is with those who say, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. You know, it's a dangerous thing for us to forget that spiritual part of us. Because it's all we'll have left when we die. You know, I started working on this message and I started thinking of things about forgetting. I think one of the biggest ones that, that as I was reading and researching and studying, one of the biggest ones that came to me. In 1923, Japan was struck with an earthquake that was called by the New York Tribune the greatest disaster in recorded time. And here are the statistics from that earthquake. It covered 45,000 square miles. It hit five large cities that had a combined population of over 7 million. Every building in Yokohama was destroyed. Three-fourths of Tokyo was burned. 300,000 people died. And two and a half million people were left homeless. Well, disease and despair were just ravaging the nation. And then help came. Most of it from America. Food, clothing, medicine, workers by the shipload. The American Red Cross collected $10 million for the suffering Japanese, and the Japanese were grateful. The newspapers carried headlines that read, Japan will never forget. But she did forget. In fact, it was just 18 years later that she bombed Pearl Harbor in a sneak attack that cost many American lives. But are the Japanese the only ones who overlook the past? Of course not. I want you to remember long ago that God said of the land of Israel, said, my people have forgotten me days without number. God blessed Israel, but they forgot him. Look to Jesus and don't forget the scars. He was pierced in order that we might be pardoned. He was beaten in order that we might be blessed. You know, when faith reigns in our hearts, worrying takes a back seat. Fear vanishes. The temptation to give up just disappears. And the memory of God's love remains fresh in our minds. So this morning, I want you to remember the four F's. Say them with me. Fret not, fear not, faint not, and forget not. Your life will be richer. Your heart will be at rest. And you will face the future unafraid. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in our hymn of response. second mom mom i think we i think we practiced i, think I, I practiced the, i don't know if we practiced the wrong song or if we those no, i think ones. i messed up <laughs> i do that sometimes which one do you want to sing well you got to sing the one that's on the screen well we haven't practiced that one that's the problem we can wing it okay or you can sing this one as a special go ahead we'll just enjoy i think everybody knows the words we've sang this before so we'll start it again Let all.
everybody now. You want to do it one more time? Okay. Okay. Now, I could tell you that I was still recovering from Lent, but truth be told, I put one song in the bulletin, and I put another one in the insert and on the screen. So, would y'all thank Miss Beverly for being here again this week, helping us out? <laughs> and now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all until we meet again. Amen. Please stand as you are able. study tonight.